Hey, bitch. <laughs> I'm Josh with Humor Haunts and Homicide. And I'm Renee. And we are on guest episode two, season one. Yes. And today mm-hmm. with us, we've got guests Chris and Diane with the podcast Haunted. Um, is it Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane? Yes. And, yes. Um, yeah. I want to give them a, a yeah. little bit of time to talk about their podcast and anything they may uh, have to say and why they're here today. Uh, so our podcast, uh, we used to just we like go in places and travel in places. And when we go there, we're always looking for uh, to try to stay at haunted locations or to uh, find out stories. And we always go on the ghost walk. So we just figured uh, we like doing it. So it'd be a good idea to try to just share the things we see with people out there. And then if they have same stories in the area that they've been through, they can tell us. And then it just kind of went from there. So then we went from just places that we would visit to we would start looking into things and we found out uh, the stories that we liked and we would just go and tell those stories. That's awesome. Yeah. Was there one particular story that really drew you to have the inspiration to start the podcast? Yeah, when we went to uh, the Myrtle's Plantation. So the Myrtle's Plantation is always been, ever since... Uh, like I've always wanted to go there in New Orleans and my parent, my mom liked it. And she would talk about uh, how she always wanted to go there. And sadly she never got to, oh. but then when we got uh, married, we were talking about a place to go for our honeymoon and instead of pick, we were going to do like Disney, but we decided instead of doing that, let's try out New Orleans. And Diane was into the haunted stuff. So we figured let's try to stay at the Myrtles. So okay. the Myrtles was kind of the uh, the big uh, the big thing that made us want to really start going all over, and we got to stay there, and we had some really creepy things happen to us. Okay. And uh, yeah, so then from then on, we just figured we'll just keep going places, and we're talking about things that we find interesting, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much what we've been doing. So you can stay, can you stay at like a lot of plantations like that? And yeah, there are, there are a quite a few, there are That's quite a few down south yeah. that have, uh, they're like bed and breakfasts. Oh. And you can yeah. go, and you can check into certain ones and you can stay there. And then of course they all have some kind of a ghost story around them. Mm-hmm. So you can go in like the Myrtles that had a, a mystery tour that we went on and they talked about the different, uh, ghosts that haunted the place and everything and that was kind of cool and uh the first night nothing really happened and then uh we were walking around that night because you're there all day and then you uh you can walk the grounds at night time and stuff so we did that and we kept having like this weird feeling like something like something was following you like Ugh. footsteps and just the feeling of being watched and yeah. So then we yeah. went back up to the room, which the room we were staying in was uh, the children's nursery. Yeah, it's called the Ruff and Sterling Room. And let me say that so the Myrtles is known for being like one of the most haunted houses in America. And the first night we had no activity, and Chris was mad. So. <laughs> <laughs> He pretty much called out these ghosts, was like, there's nothing here. And then the second night, we were there two nights. The second night, it, it was crazy. Yeah, so the <laughs> second night was the night we were walk- the, the we were walking around. And we heard what sounded like the footsteps throughout the uh, following us, and it felt kind of weird. So we go up to the bedroom, and uh, we're going to go to bed. And the room, I mean, the ho- the place is it's absolutely beautiful. And the rooms are done fantastically. and They've had, like, ghost hunters have gone there. There's an episode where they went there. Okay. And uh, we stayed, uh, like I, like she said, the Ruff and Sterling suite was the children's nursery. So when we go up or to go to bed, we got to open the door, and it feels like the door's jammed, and we can't get it open. So finally, I'm figuring, you know, it's 110 degrees out here in Louisiana. It's old. The wood's just, you know, swollen. Yeah. So, yeah. So a little bit of elbow grease, we popped it open, and we were all right. We go in there, and we lay down to go to sleep. And that night, she passed out. Yeah, I was like, out. Like, it was nothing. And then uh, I'm laying there, and around midnight, I guess it was, probably yeah, probably about midnight, uh, I wake up because it sounded like uh, the door, our door to our bedroom had opened. So that kind of like woke me up, and I'm looking around. Now it's totally dark, and we're laying on the bed, and there's no – there's no lights or anything. 
And uh, there's no TV in the rooms. It's all very old. And uh, yeah. I don't see anything. So I'm laying there. And then uh, we hear what sounds kind of like uh, we had EVPs running. And yeah, you could, we had the oh, phone running. Yeah. And yeah. you could hear on the phone what sounded like this door opening and then these footsteps walking in. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then as I'm laying there, uh, it <laughs> feels like. Like uh, something got on the bed, like at the foot of the bed, and then it, yeah, and then it feels like something slowly coming up the bed, like getting closer to the end we're laying. So as I'm laying there, I keep flipping the blankets because you know, I'm, I mean, you we're still sleeping. Like you, yeah, oh, yeah, I slept through the whole thing. I slept the whole thing. thing. <laughs> and I'm sitting down. I tried to wake her up, and she she was out of it. She's like, so. <laughs> there. So I flipped the blankets and the blankets would settle down and I'd be laying there for a little bit and then I would start feeling it again. And the only way I can uh, describe it, imagine like if you have uh, like a, a toddler or a little kid and they climb in bed with you and they're trying to get up to the end where you're at to get between us. And uh, that happened pretty much from Midnight till about three in the morning. I'm like, oh, wait. Wow. I keep trying to flip the blanket. I keep feeling this thing coming down on the bed. And I got I obviously got like yes. no sleep. Three o'clock rolls around and uh I was ready to get up and uh, you know, I'm I'm ready to get up and then she wakes up about an hour and a half later. And then we're sitting in the room just relaxing, and then we go out into the hallway and by now it was probably about six, six thirty, oh. and there was uh, a woman there, uh, Miss uh, Hester. Miss Hester, yeah. She's been on a bunch of shows and stuff, so it was kind of cool. We got to meet her, That's and cool. she comes over and she's talking to us, and uh, she's like, "So, how'd you sleep?" And I was like, "Well," and I started telling her, and she goes, "Well, let me ask you a question." I'm like, "Sure, what is it?" She said, "When you went, when you came up to go to the bed." to go to bed and you went to open your door she's like did the door stick or did it open right up i said well it was sticking and she's like oh yeah that's usually a sign that the children want to play <laughs> oh my gosh wow so, that's fine. <laughs> yeah so after that we wound up going down to breakfast and then at breakfast everybody's telling stories and telling all these different yeah. things that happen so we tell our story and then uh these two guys who work there say that before we came, they had been cleaning up the room to get it ready. And uh, they had mopped. And they said that they saw little footprints, yeah. like of a kid, in the on the ground that was wet, going from the bed towards the door. And the one guy said he saw it, and he just took off. He ran down the steps and was outside. <laughs> I, would, I, yeah, I probably would leave, and I would sleep in my car, I think, before I would... <laughs> Probably handle that. Yeah, again. but don't you want to? I want to go. Oh, I of course want. Yeah, I'm just talking <laughs> shit. I would stay 100. percent I mean, yeah. But yeah. Oh mm -hmm. my god. So That's wow. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. And then after that, there was this other family who were from Australia, and when we explained like when everything happened to us, <laughs> and when it... huh? I'm sorry. She's done like three <laughs> stories on Australia. This I'm one. like obsessed. Wow. With it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, she's so, she's all she's perfect. Yeah, I'm. An ex an, an, I guess I'm an expert now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so this one family who was staying at another suite in the main part in the other part of the house, as we told them what happened to us, and we they asked, well, how long did it happen? We told them like right around the time it stopped, and they told us that they had almost the same type of thing to happen right around the time it stopped with us. Yeah, and they had the water, the water turning on in their uh, in bathroom, the bathroom, and they got so, to the point where they actually had. Uh, they went to the main office and they actually grabbed the, uh, I guess, like the the night superintendent to come over and check the house out because they kept hearing footsteps walking and the the water was on in the bathroom and they said no, there's nothing, it's fine. So they wound up. Uh, and they had it, it. It was really cool. There's lots of really creepy stories about mm -hmm. it. But yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back because we experienced it once, and I want to go back with like a camera, and I want to run a camera and see if we see or catch anything. Yeah. 
And what kind of uh, on the, equipment invested in to really help you on these journeys? What's that? What kind of equipment have you invested in to really help you uncover all well, these? Well, we really only do EVPs and we'll do uh, pretty much really that's about it because uh, all the other stuff I just haven't gotten. We didn't start it to do like ghost hunting. We're just trying to okay. do ghost stories. But okay. after this happened, there was I want to go and I want to run a camera because I would like to see what happened. And there were people who were staying in the room across from us. They left in the middle of the night. Yeah. But the, yeah, this experience <laughs> really, like, <laughs> but this experience really like piqued our interest on the one and go to more and more and more like haunted locations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's so what we've been. Was that your? first real one and then like from, since then how many have you experienced and was there any other crazy experiences that you've had yeah we've had uh we've heard different things we've had we've uh stayed at a couple places where we've had just like you get like an eerie feeling mm -hmm. and then you'll wind up just uh yeah, it, it's it's just like a heavy really heavy feeling you're walking around and yeah, and then you'll hear things, and uh, I mean, even our house right now, we we'll hear stuff when nobody is in the house. And we also went to um, the Magnolia Mansion in New Orleans, and oh. it's supposed to be haunted there too. And there we heard footsteps, and um, my ring. Yeah, my wedding ring. I put my wedding ring. Uh, it was again. It was during our for our honeymoon. So our first episode was called Haunted Honeymoon because that's what got us wanting to do it so <laughs> so we stayed there and i had taken my ring off and left it on there's like a fireplace mantle and then i went and got in bed and then diane's like oh let me get your ring and i'm like ah, i ain't gonna go nowhere i'll get it in the morning because i was retired i mean we were out all day going uh, we didn't get home until oh man after midnight yeah so uh we hear noises that night, and then I wake up the next morning and hear my wedding ring is sitting on the table right next to where I was sleeping. And I asked, Diane, and I said, Diane, I'm like, I'm like, well, you didn't have to grab that. You could have just left it there. I would have gotten. I didn't get it. And that's what she said. She's like, I didn't get it. I don't know what you're talking about. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> At least they didn't take it. I mean, that's the plus. I know, right? <laughs> They knew you needed it. They yeah, like, maybe, well, maybe they were. Maybe they thought you would forget it on the mantle, so they were like helping. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, could be because okay. you no, know, like they were worried that you'd maybe like forget you put it there or something. I don't know. And that well, makes sense weird. because after it happened, when we were talking to the owner, there's apparently a ghost there called uh, the caretaker, and, and the caretaker goes in the rooms and it like will do stuff like that. Like it'll set your shoes up for you. Yeah. <laughs> it'll do all kinds of things. Nice. Sit like at the same time. Hey, hey, I've seen this shirt iron when I go out tomorrow for dinner. If you don't yeah, mind, right? I just... <laughs> oh my gosh. So what was your favorite experience that you've had thus far? Um I mean I we, the Myrtles thing was probably the the scariest thing that has happened mm -hmm. but uh we also went to uh gettysburg yeah gettysburg and gettysburg is really really cool and we we went to uh tell them about the wheat field oh yeah we we're driving at night and we're going in towards uh to little round top in gettysburg where you can uh devil's den where you can like stand there and people it's all supposedly haunted and we're going okay. with my brother okay. on our way over i would think so yeah, <laughs> and on my way over, I happen to look over, and there's part of the battlefield. It's called the wheat field, and it's part of the the battle. And uh, I could have sworn I saw what looked like somebody with like a big sack, like a soldier walking through the wheat field. And I saw it, and my brother's in the back seat, and I'm like, "Did you just see?" And he's and he's like. What did you see? And I told him. He's like, yeah. He's like, I saw it too. He's like, it was right there. And I'm like, yeah. So we both oh, saw what shit. looked like maybe a soldier who was uh, still doing uh, drills. Oh, yeah, so yes, we referred to uh, him we, as the know. ghost magnet. He, all the ghosts <laughs> yes, that come to him. <laughs> oh my god! I 
I want to make an effort on doing more things like that because I mean, I've had like minor little experiences, but nothing, Mm -hmm. nothing like that. But I've also never really like put myself in a like haunt, like supposed haunted place. So like, I really want like, I'm nervous to do it, but I really very interested. Have either of you been to Savannah? I talk about Savannah a lot on this podcast, mainly because it was the motivation for why I wanted to start doing haunting stories and mm-hmm. also traveling. Um, have you traveled to Savannah? Or I have not been to Savannah. That's one of the places we want to go to. We want to go to Savannah and we, we want to go to Charleston. Charleston. Yeah. We want to kind of make like a trip out of that. Yeah, he's, so he's going in April with his um, husband and um, oh, nice family. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. We were at the Marshall House, which is one of the more haunted hotels. I think it was voted number three hotel in America, just voted on USA Today. Oh, but cool. it was also also a war hospital, and um, oh, okay. two different. Episodes. So tons of deaths there. It was um, estimated to be in the thousands. And my dad's a Ooh. new enthusiast, and he wanted to go somewhere cool. And we really couldn't Ooh. get into any other hotel because most things in Savannah are haunted, just due to its nature and what's happen with the history there but yeah um we're going back there it's it's a pretty good price and uh, i want to do video as well i wasn't doing any yeah. video before but I, if i can maybe get a hold of a meter before then should i go back there and see if i can get some readings but yeah i'm really interested yeah, that, to go that, over awesome. that does sound pretty awesome yeah. and we want to yeah. we're looking to do a charleston savannah trip because she's always going to to go to charleston mm-hmm. i've driven through it down to go down to Florida when I was younger, but uh, mm-hmm. never actually been able to stay there. And I wouldn't, yeah, we're definitely, we want to go check that out. Yeah. And another thing I really want to do is the Queen Mary. I know you just had an episode with mm-hmm. uh, talking about the Queen Mary. That was really good. We want to thank you. We also want to go and visit that as well. It just looks really yeah. cool. I've looked at a little more pictures since then. And um, it yeah. looks like elegant, creepy, like exactly what mm-hmm. you would imagine. It's fantastic. I want to do so like i want to do so much so many like i want to go to that's Centralia. just it there's yeah right yeah we want to go to centralia we should go there yeah that's not that yeah. far away from us oh yeah you're in pennsylvania right yeah yeah, yeah we're in philadelphia wow, yeah. how far are you away from that um uh, yeah i think it's maybe two hours yeah well, I cannot wait to you uh, to go there and do an expiration and, and report it back on your oh, podcast because yeah. that would awesome. be a great follow. Love that. Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we we I definitely want to go there, and, and I want to get to. Uh, there's a whole there's a thing coming up called uh, Paracon, mm-hmm. and we're going to be trying to get to to go to that, and it's uh, at the uh, Penhurst Penhurst Asylum. Yeah, we got to get up there, and too. it's a whole thing where it's all. People who do paranormal are there, and you can talk to people and all kinds of really cool uh, stuff like that where you can get to know some. Uh, and I'll have, like, a couple people who are, like, from TAPS and stuff like that over there. And we're looking to try to go to do that. That's in June, or so, I think. We're looking to get tickets for that one. You can get vendor tickets if you want to, like, try to sell or go talk, or you could just go as, like, a guest. So we're looking to do that. Now, one of the coolest places that I would definitely recommend you guys go, and it's really close, is Cold Spring Village. Oh, in, in Cape May. In Cape May. That, we Village. went there last year, and we got some of the best photos that I have ever, I've ever gotten uh, doing, so like, what's ghost spring? stuff. Never heard of this. So, Cold Spring Village is uh, a village over in... By Cape May, and it's they took basically there was an old village that they moved a lot of the houses and they recreated it in this new area. Well, it's all the original houses and everything that were there, and they have all kinds of uh, you can go down, you can walk around, and you can see it. And it's like a historical living museum, living history museum. So you can go in there and they'll have somebody doing like the the presses for printing and yeah, they have reenactment yeah things. and they talk about it well they have a thing last year we went to it was a paranormal weekend and that was really neat and we went there and they have ghost tours and their ghost tours are really good and we were going on a ghost tour and we were taking pictures of everything and there's this one building it used to be a uh the schoolhouse no no not the schoolhouse it was the one it was a uh, the bar it was a bar and it was like a hotel 
on a crossroad. And they moved it to this new location, and it's set up the way it was back then. And we went in there, and they're talking about uh, there's this ghost there who was uh, like a bartender, and he really disliked women. He was like real a real jackass. So we're in there, and these girls are there, and they're taunting him and taunting him, and nothing's happening. Well, I just happen to start snapping some pictures as they're doing it, and I got two pictures. And they are so clear that it is a figure in the window and there is nobody there because it's got bars on it and there's nothing on the other side. And you can see this. It looks like a man, a figure on these two windows. It's some of the coolest photos I have. We did a whole episode on that. And uh, yeah, that, that one's that was really really cool. That that's the best like video type footage or photos I've actually gotten. Cuz I mean, I, you see, I'm telling you, the it looks like a person. Yeah. It absolutely looks like a person. It looks like they're in the window. Yeah, and we have these all that's on our cute. YouTube channel. Oh, and we also have um EVPs we got from the Myrtles. They're on our YouTube channel too. It's We're definitely going to have to check that out. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I am all about that experience for yeah, sure. Yeah, really cool. I can't wait. Yeah, you'll oh need uh, headphones to listen to it, but it sounds like what we think is a little girl laughing and running. And then you could hear him snoring when we were sleeping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty <laughs> creepy. He's like, yeah, we're working on So I just like to ask a couple like theoretical questions. I didn't say that correctly. Theory. Theoretical. 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 <laughs> close. I still say I so close. <laughs> if you were going to haunt somebody, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a good question. Who would I want to haunt? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's where, you know? And why would you haunt there in that place? You want to go first? No, you can go first. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um... I'd probably haunt my family members just like so they didn't forget me <laughs> and just <laughs> do things to annoy them, like dump over a trash can or something and stick their keys in jello. Oh, there you go. I would probably <laughs> I would probably wanna find like I like all I'm big on like history so i would want to do one of the historical areas so i would probably like my all-time favorite place to go is gettysburg so i think if i were to haunt any place it probably would be somewhere over there i just go there and i just feel that i don't know i just i it resonates with everything that i've learned and talked about through growing up so i'd probably be somewhere around gettysburg gettysburg on one of the battlefields or one of the hotels mess with somebody awesome. who comes in there Right. Just for fun. Have you ever played with a Ouija board? No. Have you ever done that? I did when I was younger. And then I won't do it. I I won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, <laughs> I did it with like some other kids, but I think they were moving it, but I don't do that anymore. It's I think it's yeah. something that opens you up to things that you don't want. I've always right. told her I was going to play with one, and she's no. she's totally against it. <laughs> now, something I like to ask people that are enthusiasts, enthusiasts, God, I really am nailing these <laughs> words today. It's just coming naturally. What were you always a believer, or did something happen in your life that made you flip that mindset? And, and I guess the paranormal, anything spooky, creepy. Or, or what, you know, some people like have this disbelief when they start going into it and then something happened and they're like, oh shit, yeah, this right. is definitely real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they turn a, 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 a what's the word? A, a, spectic, a skeptic into a believer. Mm -hmm. uh, I never really was a skeptic about it. I've always been interested in it. And I guess it's just kind of, you want to believe that there's something else out there. Everybody sure. wants to believe that when your time when your time's up on this this earth, there's something more. So I think what gets me interested in it is I believe that maybe that perhaps say a spirit or something is just like an echo 
And there are certain times that it just bleeds over and you can you just happen to see it for that brief minute. I've always been interested in it. And I've probably always been somewhat of a believer in it. I grew up, my mom, my family was really into it. My mom was into it. She had all kinds of experiences. My aunt, she still has all kinds of experiences with it. So I grew up hearing stories. So I just kind of grew up into wanting to, oh, wow, this sounds really neat. This sounds really neat. But uh, you grew up in haunted houses, too. Well, yeah, well, the one house was, yeah, that was, uh, you know, that was the one with uh, my brother. He saw this little girl and he called her Jessica. And uh, nobody else saw her. Nobody else knew who she was. But we looked up history and there were happened. There was actually a girl named that who lived there and she died from uh, smallpox or TB or something. And he used to say that she was down the basement. And that he would talk to her for hours on end. And nobody, okay. and he, yeah, yeah. So uh, growing up with, with that, and then, yeah, just, like I said, my mom and my mom's, old, my dad wasn't really into it. He had a few things happen to him, but he was more skeptical about whether or not everything's ghosts. Not only everything's ghosts, but I do believe that there's some kind of, hereafter and that there are probably spirits of people who are left here and they're wandering waiting to see if they can move on what about you um well i grew up in a house that was really creepy i i saw ghosts i saw the shadow figure when i was a kid i've told you about it yeah um I had to be like maybe eight or nine and when i would go to bed i would leave my bedroom door open like a crack and I, I was awake, right, like starting to fall asleep, but I would see this shadow. This shadow looked like a man with like a cowboy hat on, and he would walk past my bedroom door. And oh, it would oh. get to the top of the landing of the stairs, and I don't know if it went down the stairs or it vanished, but I saw that a couple times when I was a kid. And it makes me think of the sixth sense when there was that cowboy kid with the axe in his... Oh, throat. yeah! Yeah! Oh, they gave me like, oh, wow. let's give me the chills. Wow. <laughs> have you ever felt that you have like known a ghost that you felt or saw? Like anyone from your, like a relative or anything like that? Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think I have. What about you? I mean, I don't know if I saw it as a ghost, but when I was a kid, uh, my grandfather, he, had, he was in the Navy and he had worked uh, during World War II in the Korean War. And he was a uh, uh, chief petty officer, and he was in charge of the engine. Well, back then, the engine crew, they used uh, asbestos all the time. Oh. So he wound up getting mesothelioma, and he wound up passing away. I think he was in his late 60s or early 70s. And as I was sleeping, I was probably about uh, maybe eight or nine, and I was laying in bed. I was asleep, and I had a dream. Because he lived with us. my He lived with us and my mom was taking care of him and everything. And uh, I had a dream that there was a bright light and he and I saw him and he was in like this, in like the white nightshirt that he was sleeping in on, in the bed. And in the dream, he told me that uh, he was leaving and uh, you know, he loved me and all this other stuff. And I remember after it ended, I woke up. And I went downstairs, and my dad comes in and grabs me to, like, intercept me. And he's like, whoa, hey. And, and then I'm sitting down, and he's like, yeah, we want to tell you. And I told him, Howard, I'm like, yeah, I already know. Grandpa Pitt, Grandpa died. And he's like, how'd you know that? And I told him, I said, he came, and he said goodbye to me. Wow. So I, that's probably the biggest thing with, like, family. I mean, I had other family things like that. Like, my father, he passed away, and I had dreams where, went in to see him and he's in like a who's just in like a white room and i go over to him and he's telling me uh like what are you doing here you shouldn't be here you need to go back here and i'm like well i wanted to see i want to say hi and he's like no you gotta go and uh so i've had stuff like that i've always had strange i guess things happen to me that's why she calls me a ghost magnet (laughs) yeah you're like in in tune or something you know like which I think is really cool. I think that's yeah, a gift, I really. Yeah. Yeah. Some people think it's a curse. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 like the dream thing is really fascinating to me. Like that, 
Yes. We talked about it before. I think it was actually yeah. guest episode one with uh, Chris. Yeah. And it was, I think dreams are very polarizing. And I think that they are almost a gateway into these places. Um, I, 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 I believe in that too. Yeah. I've never had the experience personally. I want to so badly, know. you know, yeah. but I don't know. I just don't remember my dreams very well. Yeah, that's an, I, that yeah. loose, yeah, like lucid dreaming. That's something that uh, for a while I was, I like was, I did a lot of like weird, strange, uh, like I, I was into the occult for a little while, and then I got out of that, and then I became religious, and then uh, now I'm kind of like a nice medium. Do wait, did but, you say uh, you were in a? No, I was got, into. Oh, the I was occult. like, oh, I was like, tell close. me more. No, no, <laughs> No, I was into the occult. I studied it, and I would research it, and I was very interested in it. And uh, the thing that got me out of that was I was at my uncle's, and I was working on – I like writing. I, I write stories and everything. And I had this idea to write a story about, uh, like, the battle of – and, like, heaven from the perspective of, like, the angels and the demons – so I started really reading into it and looking into demonology and all this other stuff. And I was studying up on it and I started writing it. Well, I stopped that because a lot of really weird stuff started happening. Because once you, I really believe that once you open like that door, mm-hmm. there you real stuff will start really coming through. And then you can't, you can't control it. You can't understand it. Yep. And, uh, I had some really weird stuff happen. I started hearing stuff and and, and uh, seeing some things, and then I was like, "All right," and I stopped. <laughs> but I, yeah, so I mean, I don't know if that's also part of why I think I sometimes kind of have some weird dreams. But yeah, it's it is what it is. Okay, you're, it sounds like you're embracing it, and I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Do you, what else do you have to say, you know, to your audience, to your fans, to your, your guests, and, you know, future experiences you have? Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, so again, the podcast is called Haunter Escapes with Chris and Diane, mm-hmm. and we mainly go about the uh, places we've been, and uh, we'll talk about stories we'll read up on, and we started doing cryptids recently. Yep. And uh, yeah, we have episodes every one, at least once or twice. Like in like a season, we're on season like three. Mm-hmm. So what we usually do is once or twice a season, we'll have people, we'll talk to people and we have our personal experiences. And essentially we tell stories like I just was telling you guys. And then uh, we have other people who will tell us and uh, sometimes we'll interview people, we'll have them call in and they'll talk to us or whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, so we're doing that now. And I'm working on a new one, which it's going to essentially be stories, but they're going to be fictional, written by, I'm going to write some, Diane's going to write some, and I'm going to have an open on our website. If you want, you can, like, put a story down and we'll read your story. I I have a guy who's going to be doing reading for me. Uh, He's going to be doing the recordings. Uh, So that's... Hoping to get that going by beginning of the summer. So hopefully like in like May. Right now I'm just kind of working out. Got to have material written. So that's kind of yeah. yeah. difficult doing that plus working your regular job. So well, you guys you guys get it. We do. <laughs> we, we totally understand. Yeah, yeah so we, we're doing um the our regular podcast with the haunted locations and the cryptids. And the ones that... Um, the other podcast Chris was talking about is going to be called uh, Candlelit Stories Podcast, and it's um, fictional stories written by me and him and some other people. Are going to have um, yeah, anybody really? Yeah. It's it's going to be like an open thing. If if you want us to read your story, you can write it, you can send it in. We'll look it over, and then we'll see if we can do an episode on it. And then we'll just have this the guy who's going to be reading. Uh, he's a uh, he used to work for KYW. He was a uh, he was he did their weather reporting, and uh, okay. he's a friend of mine who I met through work. And he's agreed to do some readings for us and everything. So we're gonna because he's got you know he's got that voice. <laughs> he's got that radio voice. Yeah. He's got that radio voice. And uh, so he's gonna do some reading. He's gonna do the readings for us. So that's the that's the next thing we're doing because. 
we're going to go, like, as we're going to be writing them and we're doing that, we're going to try to go out and do, see more things, go more places, get more stuff for the Hornet Escapes. And then I eventually would like to, we're going to try to get a bunch of different things underneath it. So, yeah, we got a lot of stuff that we're planning on doing and big dreams for our whole little thing. Excited to see it. Very excited. <laughs> and, and thank you again for joining us today on our guest episode two at Humor Haunts of Homicide. Yeah, it was great. Really oh, good time. Thank you, Amazing. Guys. thank you very much for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. And happy St. Patrick's Day. I don't think yeah, we mentioned yeah. that. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yeah, so you guys have a great weekend. Okay, you guys too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.